Hello friends. Today we'll be taking up this very important topic called audits in transfusion medicine. Now this topic is why it is important is because uh, it's a dry topic and I think somebody needs to address it and uh, most of our colleagues would want that this topic is taken up. So what are audits in transfusion medicines? Audits basically are important component component of any patient blood management strategy. The audit reveal whether the process that we are doing is up to the desired mark and whether it is done in an efficient manner or not. Audits of transfusion medicine can occur both inside the blood bank or in the hospital wards and operation rooms. Audits of the latter are generally performed to ensure that clinicians are following the institutional directive or the guidelines that are recommended by the transfusion medicine fraternity and it is done at with utmost precision and also these audits means that this section or this this part of the hospital is doing well and is up to the mark for the audits in transfusion medicine now i will give the uh, session to my colleague dr meenu who will be taking us through this uh, very important session and after that we'll be discussing and having some questions audits in transfusion medicine Audit is a formal examination or review of any procedure or outcomes with a view to rectify the shortcomings. In general, audits are the means of monitoring to determine whether actual activities comply with the planned activities and are implemented effectively and achieve the desired objectives. It is usually done by a transfusion service officer or a hospital transfusion committee. Audit monitors and addresses transfusion practices for all categories of blood and blood components including the usage and discard as well as the appropriateness of the use that is from the manufacturer level to the consumer level that is from the donor screening and blood component production to the level of clinicians. It also gives recommendations to the medical staff regarding improvements in transfusion procedures. Aim it is to reduce the inappropriate use by developing or adopting evidence-based guidelines for blood component use. There will be modification of the physician behavior towards patient transfusion needs in a cost-effective manner, creates an auditing criteria for detecting outliers and targeting those practices requiring further evaluation. There will be assessing of the institution's transfusion efficacy by monitoring blood component ordering, transfusion, return and wastage. Functions, audits serve a dual function of identifying area of concern in the use of blood products and monitoring intervention or changes in the identified areas. Review items required by ABB and JCI for the PBM certification programs include blood component use, blood component wastage and product expiration, cross match transfusion ratio, deviation from transfusion practices and protocols, transfusion reactions, intraoperative blood recovery use and quality control, informed consent for blood transfusion documentation, massive transfusion protocol effectiveness, blood infusion equipment and warmers maintenance program annually, and external assessment results which is done biannually. Areas of the audit. Audit includes a blood donation area, a component preparation laboratory, Audits of bedside activities related to transfusion, which include blood sample collection, labeling, completeness of a blood requisition form, turnaround time for processing requisition, time to start a transfusion, pre-medications given to the patient, transfusion time. Audits to blood transfusion include a hospital or a departmental transfusion rate, that is number of unit transfused per hospital per year. The percentage transfused per year or user department for each indication. Cross mass transfusion ratio per user or department for the type of surgery or indication. Then there is transfusion index or a transfusion proportion. The next one is transfusion failure rate, that is, the percentage of transfusion that did not achieve the expected outcome. The incidence of non compliance with transfusion guidelines, that is, the transfusion triggers, are measures that can be useful for during the initial audits. For example, for red cells, we can monitor the hemoglobin or the hematocrit levels and clinical parameters like pulse rate and BP. For platelets, we can uh, take into account the platelet count, presence or absence of clinical bleeding. For FFP, results of coagulation tests like prothrombin time, APTT, PTINR. Now, the scheduling of an audit. 
It can be either a routine audit or an emergency audit. In a routine audit, it is based on the needs of our blood transfusion service. It is done monthly, quarterly, half yearly or annually. Then there is emergency audit that is done when there is some error or incidence comes into notice and has to be reported for correction with formal or informal communication with the concerned staff. Types of transfusion audits. For compliance with assuring the quality products or service, it can be quality audit or a medical audit. For compliance with good manufacturing practices, there is internal and external audit. For compliance with good clinical practices, there is prospective audit, concurrent audit, and retrospective audit. Retrospective can be further classified into internal as well as external. Quality audit, it should be comprehensive, should cover each and every aspect of blood transfusion. It assesses the relation between various components of service, it should be selective and specific at times. It can be internal or either external. Medical audit, it is carried by the hospital transfusion committee. Representatives from many specialties like medicine, surgery, hematologist, hospital administration, anesthesia, nursing staff and transfusion medicine will be a part of it. The committee will be chaired by a senior doctor and consultant transfusion medicine should act as a member secretary. Internal audit, it is carried out by the staff that does not bear a direct responsibility to the area being audited. All parts of the blood transfusion services are covered in such audits and it forms a baseline for future practices. External audit, it is carried out by trained auditors outside the organization. It can be mandatory as well as voluntary. In mandatory, like in case of a drug inspector for issuing or renewal of blood bank licenses, a failure in such an audit may lead to grave consequences like de-licensing. In case of a voluntary audit on request by the blood transfusion service system, usually restricted to some particular area of BTS, that is for ISO or GSTI uh, recognition. Now there is prospective audit, that is it requires a review of transfusion requests in real time before the issue of a component. It permits the opportunity to intervene and stop or change an inappropriate transfusion request. Individual requests are reviewed using a pre-specified audit criteria like uh, guidelines established by the AABB or JCI. Selective audits of either specific clinical areas or specific time period may be used, which could be time saving. Here we exclude the departments like emergency department, ICUs and uh, uh, other emergency cases as it could lead to adverse clinical events. Advantages involves the ordering physician, which helps to decide the appropriateness of the use helps in formulation of guidelines and we have the ability to intervene directly and to change a transfusion request before the component is issued. Disadvantage is that it is labor intensive, difficult to implement universally, delay in some transfusion that fail to meet the criteria for appropriateness could happen. The next is concurrent audit. This audit review individual transfusion requests in 12 to 24 hours following a transfusion episode. It involves similar process as the prospective audits. There will be post transfusion review and it cannot lead to any alteration in the individual transfusion event. It is designed to alter future transfusion practices. A feedback is given to the physician with a short period of time after the transfusion which offers the opportunity to change future transfusion practices. This is a selective audit and reduces the workload. Advantage is that it is a consultative opportunity. Disadvantage, it is a time consuming, labor intensive and ineffective if there is a no transfusion medicine involvement, physician involvement. Implementation, extents and frequency of audit is determined. Clinical information at the time of request are met. Criteria for appropriate or inappropriate indications are mentioned. Request a screen to identify the inappropriate transfusion. Review of inappropriate requests with senior staff or transfusion medicine physician and as discussed with the requesting physician. The last one is a retrospective audit. That is, it offers the opportunity to review aggregate transfusion data and trends in transfusion utilization. It is reviewed by a hospital transfusion committee or an external agency. It reviews individual transfusion for appropriateness may be more difficult given the remoteness of the transfusion event. Feedback is given to individual clinicians or clinical services should be a part of the retrospective audit. 
to ensure the optimal usage of the components. Advantage is that it is less labor intensive as compared to the previous audits. Feedback to the clinician is ineffective in reducing the total number of units transfused, number of units transfused per patient, proportion of patients transfused, and number of inappropriate transfusions. Disadvantage is that the long-term effect of these changes in practice following the introduction of retrospective audit has not been evaluated. Implementation, extent and frequency of audit can be determined, determines the outcomes, review the audit data, and determine whether any additional interventions to optimize transfusion practices are warranted. Now the interventions we want to implement is that the goal it is an implementation of best practices in daily practice. Purpose, it is to identify gaps between guidelines, that is the best practices and the current practice. Individual education or feedback, group education, feedback or teaching, guideline dissemination, incorporation of reminders or guidelines into transmission request form or a computerized form. Ideally, selection of interventions include local stakeholders and assessment of local factors that may affect the effectiveness of interventions. Published studies evaluating the effect of prospective and retrospective audits on transmission practice have generally demonstrated a reduction in either total amount of blood transfused or proportion of inappropriate transfusions. Now this is a comparison of all the uh, audits that I've mentioned right now. Prospective audit, that is a real time audit, the reviewer will be a resident, medical director, the advanced staff, or a computerized system. The advantage is that it is proactive, improves patient care, and saves blood in real time. Disadvantage is that it is labor intensive. There is potential to cause delays in issuing blood. In concurrent, that is within 12 to 24 hours of issuing the blood, the reviewer will be a um, resident or a transmission service officer. It is consultative opportunity and it could act as a training tool for the residents. Disadvantage is that it is labor intensive, ineffective if there is no physician involvement. Retrospective audit, which can be further divided into internal and external. In internal, which happens within days to weeks of issuing a blood component. It is done by quality assurance personnel, medical director or a clinical peer. This is the easiest approach and it provides data for trending and benchmarking. But this can be a known standardized review as these doctors or people that is auditing will be knowing each other. So it is difficult to use the data for direct physician comparison. Retrospective external, which occurs within days to weeks of transfusion. A network of trained peer reviewers will be taken as a reviewer. The advantage is that it is objective, thorough, standardized review will be done and produces direct comparison of the data. Now, how to conduct an audit? It is a very elementary approach and can be used for the first audit cycle. As confidence is gained, the audit process can be extended to a higher level. Once the results are obtained from the initial audits, they can serve as tools to modify increased resources to be allocated to the process. It starts with a planning, identify a topic, choose the standards, write a protocol, collect data, analyze the data, interpret the findings, and implement those changes. Audit report should be discussed in the HTC to implement recommendations to overcome lacunae detected in the audit. This may be in the form of physician and paramedical staff education and training, usage of computer software for intelligent blood requisitioning, recommendation for electronic patient identification systems, and yeah, implementation of special aid transmission nurses. This is a study, case study, showing a prospective audit in case of a FFP. Here it was shown that inappropriate requests accounted for 30.2% of total FFP requests in patients who had a normal coagulation parameters. This in a case of total knee replacement and a total hip replacement surgery. Here it was found that two units of red, red cells are required for a total knee replacement Whereas in a unilateral THR or a total hip replacement, three units are required and a bilateral THR, four units are required. In a case of ICU, about 21.4% of PRC, 14.5% of FFP and 19% of the patients platelets were inappropriately indicated. 
in a case of platelet audit 12 percentage of the profilactic platelets were transfused inappropriately in a cabg with normal platelet counts and no evidence of bleeding related to the platelets of the 5444 rdps prepared 1585 units were not utilized another unit audit done in maharashtra showed that there was no checklist for routine check for observation of hemolysis or deterioration of blood or plasma there was no facility for separate private interview to exclude sexual diseases requisition forms were not properly filled for blood transfusion indications and there was no facility for notification of donors who are permanently deferred concluding transfusion audits provide information on levels of compliance standards and frequency of unnecessary transfusions to improve the hospital transfusion service for best patient outcome there should be a robust hospital transfusion policy a well thought pbm program diligent audits to cover all processes in transfusion htc is an essential instrument for having a vision and for their successful implementation thank you so i think uh, we are wiser with the clinical audit now and uh, we have understood what clinical audits are uh, in transfusion medicine in particular and uh, we tend to practice it at our end and it is going to be very beneficial not only for the transfusion medicine staff and the blood bank but also for the clinicians who are following these guidelines so thus far in this uh, this session we have described how the audits have been performed at the level of both hospital and clinical services and uh, how the clinicians or a blood bank blood product prescriber is actually going to you know address the same in order to be able to be very specific the transfusion services or the hospital information technology can also be very helpful here one way of obtaining this information is by employing a computerized physician order entry that is cpoe system whereby the blood and the blood products prescriber must digitally log in and then you know prescribe this that way we have everything the every information which is digitized and we can extrapolate it we can have an excel sheet we can audit it retrospectively and see how it goes from there so i think clinical audits are uh, you know something which is very important it's like a necessary evil which we need to have in the blood bank and we to make sure that our blood transfusion services are running properly thank you so much please stay tuned with uh, more sessions of these and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this channel thank you so much